teacher for about 15 years now. Um, I'm also a psychotherapist and a counsellor. So for those reasons, I've got become quite interested in mental health in the workplace, self-care in the workplace, and in particular in teaching. Um, you know, considering what's happened in the last few weeks <coughs> to a few people here, I think it's particularly pertinent. Um, so I was going to start with kind of talking a little bit about what stress and anxiety are, um, kind of some of the mindsets that lead you to being stressed or anxious, how it relates to teaching, and maybe a few, a few things you might, you might <coughs> try to do to, to manage those, those problems. So I was just going to start by a little definition of stress. Um, so stress is basically a means of uh, coping with something that we perceive as threatening. The thing of stress is a primordial kind of thing from our ancient past, whereby you're confronted with danger and you respond, you run away, you sweat, you fight it, flee or fight, fight or flee, that's the, the common expression. So it's a, it's a very useful thing, or at least it was a very useful thing, when you're confronted by something dangerous. You should be stressed. If a bomb goes off, you should be stressed. However, you shouldn't be stressed if you're speaking in public. <coughs> You know, there's no, there's no advantage to being stressed. It's just the, the brain hasn't evolved sufficiently to find another way of coping with it. So you find yourself feeling nervous, feeling anxious. It doesn't help you. But the function itself did have a function once upon a time. It's just no longer relevant. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the other kind of side of stress, anxiety. Stress and anxiety, very, very closely aligned. Pretty much the same thing. Anxiety, you might say, is a little bit about something that you expect to happen, as opposed to a kind of a general feeling of being stressed. Uh, we call this the cycle of anxiety. Um, so you have a, a thought, like in a teaching sense, I'm a terrible teacher. My God, the students hate me. You know? The feeling then is a kind of a feeling of self-consciousness, or, oh dear, I've got to be careful. He doesn't like me. She's always on her phone. There must be... There must be a reason for this. The, the body, suddenly you're feeling tense, your mouth is dry, no energy, possibly too much energy. And then the behavior is that you can either kind of withdraw or you might go the other way and you might be a little bit hyperactive. And ultimately, you don't really enjoy yourself. You're not very happy. And the problem is, in any cycle, you know, it continues. Kind of stopping the cycle is not so easy, but the first step I would suggest is awareness that it exists. You know, so if you're feeling something, if you're feeling unhappy about something, perhaps you can relate it to something that happened previously. You know, you can see the signs of the cycle, and that can be a means to, to, to stop it. Now, a few mindsets that lead to kind of stress and anxiety, not directly related to teaching, but related to, to life in general. First one is called catastrophizing, which means it's going to be a disaster. Fearing the worst, getting yourself worked up, this is going to be terrible, they're all going to laugh at me, I'm going to fall over, my trousers are going to fall down, everything's going to go wrong. Catastrophizing, kind of feeling, fearing the worst. Another one is personalizing or externalizing, which would be personalizing and kind of blaming yourself. God, why do I always do this? It's so silly of me. My fault. Externalizing would be kind of putting the blame on someone else. You know, it's the director of studies' fault. Why did he give me that class? That student's always, you know, turning everyone against me. Kind of putting the blame either fully on yourself or fully on someone else when the truth is always somewhere in the middle. It's never as extreme as that. Mind reading is another one whereby you decide that people don't like you, maybe, or you decide, you've decided that, oh, the students hate me. How, how do you know they hate you? I just know. Like, do you really? You know, have they said they hate you? Have they done something to suggest that they hate you? You, you know, you, can't, you don't know what someone's thinking. You really don't. As much as you like to think you do, you don't. So mind reading is generally taken on board in a negative way. You kind of presume that people are thinking things about you, which might not be true. Two other ones, all or nothing thinking, is either everything is great, the class went brilliantly, 
or the opposite, it was a disaster, nothing in between. Again, no kind of, no compromise, all or nothing extreme thinking. And the last one, spelling is important. <laughs> <laughs> That's a U, by the way, it's like, no. um, Masturbation. Um, wouldn't encourage it. Uh, even, anyway, I won't say any jokes. Um, masturbation is kind of a thing where things must be as you want them to be. Like, I would associate it in a teaching sense of, oh my God, the printer's not working again, I need that copy, I must have that copy, I must, must, must. If I don't, the world's going to end, you know, this disaster. You know, in reality, of course, it won't. Like, this happened yesterday, you know, you got through the class then. You know, and it's the same with all of these, it's like trying to be a little bit rational about it. You know, if the, if the photocopy doesn't work, if you miss the bus, you know, you will survive. You're not going to die. You know, you'll get through the class, you get through the day. So these kind of mindsets um, are liable to induce stress and anxiety. We all use them, but it's being aware of them, I would say, is the first stage. Now, why is teaching stressful? Um, now, I'm just going to a few reasons why I would say teaching is obviously there's also stress that teaching is a very enjoyable job. I think most of us like it, that's why we do it. Students are 99% nice. Teachers are generally a fairly nice bunch, you know. I've worked in an office, I wouldn't say the same in all, in all, in all jobs. So just a few things there. I would say you're overworked, we are overworked. I would say quick, quick show of hands, who works during the lunch break? Yeah, everybody, it's ridiculous. You know, so we all work too hard. Um, always being on. In that the, te the students expect you to be Bruce Springsteen or something when you come in the classroom. You know, you kind of always you can't come in feeling a little bit low on energy or a little bit hungover. You know, a little bit down. Nothing. You know, there's no mercy. You know, you kind of feel like you've always got to be on your game, which again is not the same as other jobs. You can go out for a cigarette. You can fall asleep in front of the computer. Can't do that when you're teaching. This one, I think a couple of people might recognise that letter. Okay, that was the note on the door, I think, of Grafton, if I'm not right, if I'm not wrong, saying that the job of the school was closed. Um, written in, I don't know, intermediate, pre-intermediate level English. <laughs> um, so I don't know what that says about the school. But, um, you know, it's a reality that teaching is not a particularly secure position, um, a secure uh, profession. Um, you know, we all thought this thing of schools closing was over. You know, it's not, it seems. Um, and once again, that kind of fear is, is there that your school could be the next one to close. Um, so job insecurity is a real thing. And that also depends on student numbers, things like that, which other jobs possibly don't have to worry about. And the last one, kind of related. We're not very well paid, let's be realistic. <coughs> Nobody comes into teaching to get rich. You know, your friends are off booking holidays. You know, or, you know, usually we're waiting to the end of the month to get paid. So that's quite a few reasons. What's that? Or not paid. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Or waiting for the boss, to, the owner to you know, pay you at all. Um, yeah, so some of the reasons why teaching can be stressful. Now, just a few coping mechanisms, which again I would say are theoretical. Obviously you can't always do these things, but at least be aware of them. So the first one I would have said is time management. Um, again, lots of great ideas are here about lessons, but I think... What everyone should be aware of is you can't spend all day planning a lesson. You know, give yourself a time limit. You know, I would say half an hour or an hour or whatever it is, it's up to you. But the, spending all day planning a lesson is you're not getting paid for it really in most schools anyway. If you really toss it up. Um, also, the, the resources again. It's it's great to use other resources, but you should put a limit on it. You know, there's no point. Course books are often boring, but don't spend your life trawling the internet trying to find something better, you know, it, it, it's great for the students, but think about yourself as well, you know, you, you, you've got, self-care is so important, <coughs> which kind of relates to that, I mean, I've done that as well, I'm looking for a picture of something, you know, and I'm going through the internet, oh, that's not good enough, no, a GIF, I want a JPEG, you know, like they, really, the students are going to look at it once and forget it, so, you know, look, look after number one, okay, the next one is, I would say, is being kind to yourself, um, it's like the inner voice inside you, kind of giving you, giving out to you, well, why did you do that? How did you forget that? How, what did you say that for? This kind of a thing, which again is not related to teaching specifically, 
um, but it's, it, I think we all do it. The tip I always give is that imagine someone else saying it to you. So the next time you're telling yourself, God, you moron, why did you do that? Imagine, you know, John telling you or your friend telling you, you're such a moron. Why did you? you know, you wouldn't accept it. You wouldn't tolerate it. You tolerate it to yourself, but you, don't toler you wouldn't tolerate it from anyone else. I mean, it's not logical, you know, so just be aware of when you speak to yourself, speak to yourself in a nice way, you know, as, as you would speak to other people. The other third tip I would suggest is trying, again, it's, it's, it's not a thing you can just do, but you can try, at least be aware of it, to exist in the moment. So anxiety and stress, if I were to say what makes you anxious about teaching, can anyone give a quick example? Anything that makes you anxious or stressed when you teach? Students using their phones, for example. S students using their phones, yeah, yeah, students... Yeah, that's a terrible example. Why did you say that? Because well, what, <laughs> what I was looking for was things that don't happen now. Okay, but uh, yeah, you're right. That makes me angry. Yeah, uh, yeah because, because the point I was leading towards, I'm sorry, I'm going to kill you, was that uh, anxiety is mostly related to the present and the past. Like you're thinking about things that are yet to be or have already happened. So if you can just accept that this is where I am now, I'm doing this now, there's no point worrying about what that's going to happen, what's going to happen in my next class, or no point worrying about how I annoyed the DOS yesterday, or how I shouldn't have said that to that person. It doesn't help, you know? It obviously doesn't stop you doing it, but it doesn't help. Um, which is what I was trying to say there, apart from the mobile phone, the classroom example. Um, so a couple of little things. I would say taking deep breaths works for me. Um, just when kind of things are getting a little bit, you know, getting a little bit on top of you. Um, in any of those kind of scenarios, annoying students, photocopy are not working, late for class, you know, the, the kind of feeling is we must rush, rush, rush. Actually, if you slow down, you'll, you'll get more done. You'll, you'll be more productive. And the other one, the picture there is mindfulness, which is a bit of a buzzword kind of, of late, but I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mindfulness, it relates to being in the moment, mm -hmm. uh, meditation, things like that. Meditation doesn't have to be proper guided meditations. It can just be being quiet for a few minutes or even for a minute, you know, uh, which isn't always easy in a teacher's room or in a school generally. But if you can find that space, the, the, the image they're mindful, or mindful, very clever. Um, okay, and the last coping mechanism that I would say, obviously I'm a psychotherapist and a counsellor, so this is probably the important one for me. I'm not saying I always do it, but the idea that when things go wrong, Thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking doesn't resolve it. You know, thinking about why that student doesn't like your class, thinking about it generally is not going to fix it. It's just going to stay in your mind. Uh, or thinking about anything over and over and over doesn't help. What does generally help is talking about it. So, talking about it, having a chat with someone about it. Um, what I haven't said there, but I hope it's obvious, listening. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of. Uh, important that you listen if someone else has something to say to you. You know, it can be very, very valuable. Um, so, yeah, so that's it really. There would be my tips, if, yeah, uh, to, to managing stress and anxiety. There's just a few ideas. That's PaudryMoran.com. That's like um, their guided meditations, which I think are, are very good. They're different kind of levels, like three or four minutes. If you have an iPhone or whatever, put it on your phone, sit back for a few minutes in the classroom. It's nice if you're feeling a little bit um, overworked or under pressure in any way. Um, and a few, there's a, one up there that's about a teacher, a teacher's own experience with kind of mental health issues and, and how um, she resolved them.